This here is an analog video camera. This here is also a camera, but is placed inside of a screw shape, so it could be used as a spy camera of your enemies. Those who are stealing your resistors, for example. Anyway, nowadays you can still see these cameras on FPV drones or CCTV systems for security. The video signal out of this is something like this. Might be difficult to understand, but it looks like it has a repetitive pattern. Hmm, interesting, why would that be? In this video I want to make the simplest analog video transmitter and send the signal over the radio frequencies and make our homemade spy camera. This circuit is very easy to make and requires just a few components. I will do my best to explain you how the analog video signal works, more or less, and because I still have my analog black and white TV from the vintage teardown video, let's see if I will be able to receive the video signal and display that on the analog TV. So guys, let's get started. Video sponsored by PCBWay. If you have a PCB project, you must check their services. For example, try the PCB prototype service for boards from one layer up to 14 layers. The PCB quality is amazing. Nice finish, good silk layer and exact sizes. And the production time is measured in hours. So all you have to do is to upload the Gerber files of your PCB, select the settings such as the color of the board, the size, the thickness and so on, and order the PCBs for only $5 for 10 PCBs of 10 by 10 centimeters. In just a few days you receive the PCBs so you could finish your amazing project in time and with a professional look PCB. What's up my friends, welcome back. Here's what I'm going to do. I will first show you and explain you the analog video signal with the help of my oscilloscope. Then we'll take a look over the simplest analog video transmitter circuit and mount that circuit on a prototyping PCB. Then we connect the signal from these cameras to that circuit and test if we are able to receive anything, so stick around. Ok, so a few months ago I've ordered these analog cameras from AliExpress for just a few dollars. This one is a bit bigger and is mostly for FPV drones, so you can see in real time what the drone is seeing on this kind of goggles. These other two are smaller and could be used as a spy cam. I'm not recommending spy cams and I'm against the idea of placing this in public places, but I still want to learn how this works and that's why I'm making this video. These cameras could work at 12 volts, but be careful because sometimes they require only 5 volts or below that, so I guess that these ones have a voltage regulator of some sort, but that is good for us because in that way we can supply both the camera and the transmitter with the same voltage, let's say 12 volts. So the red wire is VCC, black is ground and the yellow wire is the video signal. If the camera also has a white cable, that means that it also has a microphone and an audio output. So I connect the yellow cable to my oscilloscope and get this signal. This is the typical analog video signal that was used back in the days with the analog TVs. So each of these repeating signals represents one frame or one picture. The frame starts with a low pulse that is called sync tip. This pulse is used to synchronize the frame rate of the signal with the frame rate of the TV. So each time that the TV detects this low pulse, it will know that a new line for a new frame is coming in. The next part of the signal is the so called color burst, and that's for color TV only, and I'll explain it in a moment. The rest are just the actual pixels of the picture. And I put emphasis on pixels because this is analog TV, so we have continuous lines of light, so this part of the signal represents the luminance values. The higher this signal is, the more will the light shine on the TV. So the electrons beam from the TV ray gun will start from the top left corner and depending on this receiver signal, it will change the amount of light, where the low signal represents a dark pixel, and the high signals represent a white pixel and we could get some sort of a grey color in between of those values. But at the same time, this electrons beam is moving line by line over the screen, so those luminance values are now translated to dots of light from the final picture. 
so if we do this fast enough, we can get the real picture. As you can see if I cover the camera, so we have a dark picture, the entire signal is a low value. And if I place a flashlight in front of the camera, so the entire picture is white, we get a straight line of high values. Ok, so remember that small burst signal at the beginning of each frame? So these few oscillations will give the TV the oscillator value of the color modulation. If the TV is black and white, will only work with the luminance signal. But if the TV is color, it also needs the RGB information. So if I make a zoom, we can see that luminance signal that has another signal overlapped, and this is at a way higher frequency, and that has the information about the color. So using this color sync burst, the TV locks on that frequency and then can demodulate the color information as well. Ok, so now we want to send this signal, and for that I will use this schematic, which is very common on the internet. So just google analog video transmitter, and you will get a lot of circuits like this one. Since we are only sending the video signal, we can get rid of the audio part, but if you also want to send the audio, you can use the full schematic. Ok, so as you can see we need some resistors, capacitors, a coil, a small NPN transistor, a potentiometer, a diode and a wire for the antenna. I get a prototyping PCB and I start soldering all the components, but first, what is each plug doing inside of the circuit? Well, the coil and the capacitor is creating a so-called LC tank. This part, as we have seen in so many previous tutorials, will resonate at a specific frequency. That frequency will be our carrier, and it must be at high frequencies, since the very high band of the analog TV works between 174 MHz and 216 MHz. Then we take the video signal input and we can make the convolution with this carrier. So now the high frequency signal will carry our video signal, and since we have the antenna connected, this will create an electromagnetic wave, which are basically radio waves. And now the TV can read that signal and make the demodulation process, and show the pictures on the screen. If you want to know how this analog TV works, watch my previous vintage teardown video. Also instead of the LC tank to create the carrier frequency, some circuits are using a crystal oscillator, with a specific frequency. You could also try that if you want. To make the coil I get some copper wire and I make 3 loops of 8mm diameter. Then you peel the enamel from the tips and add some solder. I first mounted the circuit on a breadboard and instead of the 30 picofarad capacitor, I've used a variable capacitor. So in that way I was able to test the circuit for the best results, and then I measured the capacitor and it was around 30 picofarad, so that's why I've used that value for the final circuit. So I solder all the components. I solder the voltage divider and then the two capacitors. Then I solder the coil with the capacitor for the LC tank, and also the BJT transistor and the rest of the components. I now have the PCB and I cut it to size, and I also find a place for the camera as well, and I solder the wires to VCC and the video input. And for the antenna I've just used a copper wire. Now we can supply this with 12 volts and test it out. So I start the TV and put it in the VHF range of the frequencies. Then I start rotating the knob, and after a few seconds of tuning, there we have it. I finally received the video from the small transmitter. Isn't this amazing? Yes, I know the circuit is simple, but this technology is still amazing, especially knowing that this is so old. You might need to tune a little bit the circuit with a potentiometer or a variable capacitor. Also, if the frames are moving up and down, usually the TVs will have a synchronizing dial, so rotate that till you get steady frames. So guys, that's it, you have my picture on this tiny black and white screen as you can see, so the circuit works and is able to send the picture from this tiny camera to the TV using radio frequency. And I know that the circuit is very simple, but I hope that you learn something new, and now you know more or less the video signal, the analog video signal, and how it works and how, how to make the circuit. I hope that you find this interesting. Thank you guys. So guys, that's how the analog video works, more or less. And that's how you can make a video transmitter. Check all the schematics below on electronoops.com and also the different cameras that I had on this video. 
and start testing around different configurations. You could find small analog TV receivers for very cheap and with that you could create your own FPV system. I don't know for sure the range of this circuit, but maybe you could mount it and test it out and share your results. I hope that you have learned something new and if so, comment below or give me a like. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so that was the video for this week, I hope that you like it and as always, the most important part for me is that you have learned something new and I would like to thank you to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon because that for me is huge and by the way, if you would like to support my projects, you have all my links below for this Patreon page, for my social media, for my shop and so on. So thanks again and see you later guys.